In the Congo, Nzambi gave birth to a beautiful daughter. When her daughter came of age, all the animals in the land came forward to offer themselves in marriage. Nzambi told the suitors that it was not her they needed to ask, but her daughter, as she should choose her husband. The first to do this was the tiger. He asked Nzambi's daughter and was refused. The gazelle and the pig followed and were rejected as well. So went all the creatures that had breath. She did not love them and so remained unmarried. Around the same time, in a far-off village, a woman gave birth to twin sons, the first called Mavungu and the second Luemba. And each of them, as he came into this world, brought forth a fetish, the most powerful of charms. As they grew, the tale of Nzambi's daughter carried to their village, and the twin brothers dreamed of marrying the beautiful girl. Luemba, I am ready to leave. Come here and wish your older brother luck. You are needed if half the stories told of the girl are true. The daughter of Nzambi is ready to marry, and I am ready to marry her. Then I wish you a good journey, brother, and good luck. Mavungu left his brother and began to cross the Congo in search of his wife. Along the way, he ripped up a handful of grass and asked his fetish to aid him. The fetish transformed the grass into a horn, a knife, a gun, and so on, until he was well prepared for anything that might happen to him. Soon after, he grew hungry and asked his fetish, this time for food. The grass before him was turned into a feast, and he dined well. When he finished, he demanded that the fetish change the beautiful plates back to grass so that no other man may use them. After, he began his travel again. When night fell, he had his fetish create a beautiful and safe place to sleep, and when morning came, the fetish transformed it back. This continued for many days, until at last he was at Nzambi's village. Once there, he began to ask for Nzambi and was led to her great Shimbek. Along the way, the daughter spotted him and loved him at first sight. She ran to her mother. Mother! Mother! What is it? I've seen the man I love, and I shall die if I do not marry him. Who is this man? He has only just arrived in our village. If you have only just seen him, how do you know you love him? I cannot explain it. I just do, mother. We will see if he wants you as well. Go now, and I will call for you if he comes. She would not have to wait long. Hello, traveler. I am searching for Nzambi. I am Nzambi. Great Nzambi. I want to marry your daughter. It is not me you need to ask. You must ask my daughter herself, as she will only marry the man of her choice. I will call her, and if she will have you, you may marry her. Daughter! This is the man. Mother, this is the man I was telling you about. Well... I want to marry you. And I want to marry you. Then it is decided you will be wed. They wasted no time getting married, and before the week was out, a huge celebration and feast was given to honor the two. On their wedding night, Nzambi's daughter led Mavungu to her shimbek, and there he saw strange objects covered in cloth. What is this place? It is my shimbek. Yes, but what are these things? Uncover them and see. A mirror. They are all mirrors. Why are they here? They are magic mirrors. Each shows you a different place. Show me. This is my town. My home. His wife showed him the rest of the mirrors, leaving one covered. And where does this mirror show? You must never look in this mirror. Why not? It shows a cursed place. Let me look into that mirror. No. Why not? Because in that reflection you will see a town where no man who wandered has returned. Seeing that his wife had no intention of removing it, he ripped the cloth off, and in the mirror's reflection he saw a terrible place. I must go there. No, you will never return. I must go there. Please don't go. Forget it exists. Have no fear. My fetish will protect me. And as quick as he came to the village, he kissed his wife and left. He mounted a horse and galloped as if by magic to that horrible place. When he arrived, he saw an old woman. 
What is this place? A terrible town. You must leave it now. I am not afraid. Woman, do you have a fire to light my pipe? Yes, but I am old. Will you come to me? He did as the woman asked, and when he was close enough, she drew out a knife and stabbed him to death. <gasps> uh -uh. Sometime after, Mavungu's brother, Luemba, began to wander and worry about his brother. How long has Mavungu been gone, and not a word from him? Surely he has swept in Zambi's daughter away. Oh, fetish, I need a knife, food, and horse to reach my brother. The fetish did as it was told and provided him with just enough to survive the journey to Nzambi's village, and he set off. After many days of travel, he came upon the village and was greeted by erupting cheers and chanting of Mavungu. He tried to explain his situation, but no one would hear it, and soon Nzambi and her daughter came out. Mavungu! No, you are mistaken. I am Nuimba. Mavungu, what is this? My name is not Mavungu. He is my brother. Your brother? No, I know my husband. What happened to you in that village? What village? Your husband? Are you the daughter of Nzambi? Yes, Mavungu. Mavungu, you have returned. No, my name is not Mavungu. I am his brother, Loemba. His brother? Mother, something has happened to him in the village. He doesn't remember anything from before. Then we must be gentle with him while he regains his memory. We will prepare a feast in his honor. Please take him to your shimbek and let him rest. Her daughter did as she was told and left him alone with the mirrors, covered once more. Luemba didn't know what to do. The beautiful girl was his brother's wife, and when night came, she would sleep with him there. Not wanting to damage her honor, he pleaded with his fetish. Oh, fetish, please lift her out in the night and return her in the morning. What is this now? Luemba removed one of the covers from the mirror closest to him, and he stared at the reflection for a long time. The girl returned. What is it? What are these mirrors? Don't you remember? These mirrors show you different places. Why are they covered? Dreams are dangerous, Mavungu. Don't live in them. I don't understand. Will you show me? When will you learn your lesson? What do you mean? We have done this before. You went to the cursed village. That's how you came to be this way. Show me. This is the village? Yes. I must go. My brother is there. Please don't go there. He went there and never returned. You cannot. I must. Please don't leave me again. I must save my brother. Will you hear nothing? You don't understand. I am Luimba, Movungo's brother, and I can save him. You went once and you returned. I will wait for you. Luimba set off in search of his brother, and soon enough, he came to that same horrible town. The old woman greeted him as she did his brother. What is this place? I am searching for my brother. A brother? There is a man who had a brother once here. I can take you to him. He looked at her for a moment before getting off his horse. As he closed in, she took out a knife and tried to stab him. But Luemba anticipated this and killed her instead. Uh! Upon doing so, he took his fetish and placed it on the ground. Return anyone this terrible woman has killed. And soon, the bones of the fallen reassembled and grew flesh, and then they were returned. His brother was among them. Luemba? Hello, Mavungu. We must go back to my wife. They set off with the people that were rescued toward Nzambi's village. How did you know I was here? I set off for Nzambi's town, and they mistook me for you. And your wife showed me the mirrors. And when I saw the cursed village, I knew you were there. Thank you, brother. And these people? What do we do with them? I will lead them as my people. Your people? Yes. I am married to Nzambi's daughter, and I am older than you. I get them. If they should belong to anyone, it should be me. Why? 
Because I brought them back. I could have brought them back with my fetish. But you didn't. And even if you were going to, I gave you life. Well, let's hope I return the favor. What do you mean? Mavungu stabbed his brother and <gasps> left him to die. Brother. Mavungu then returned to Nzambi's village, and when he arrived, everyone rejoiced. After Mavungu left, Luemba's horse took the fetish and dragged it across Luemba's body, returning life to him. Luemba set off for the village. He arrived as Mavungu was finishing his story, and at the end, Luemba revealed himself. There are two. Luemba told the truth. Mavungo, you are a liar. You are greedy and you tried to murder me. But my horse brought me back with my fetish. I saved you from that terrible place and you stabbed me for it. If you wish to kill me, do it honorably. Is this true? My brother is a liar. You are a liar. I challenge you, Mavungo. Fight honorably against me. So the two had a knife fight. In the end, it was Luemba who came out the victor. The girl ran to her husband's dead body. Mavungu! Truth wins out. So you are Luemba. You have done us a favor. Data, see to it our guest is well taken care of. Luemba was treated as an honored guest of Nzambi, and when the story of what had happened between the twin brothers was told, all who heard it agreed that Luemba did what was right. <laughs> 